Hi! Hello and welcome. <laughs> this is going to be a great day. My name is Steve Milky. This is my amazing wife, Stephanie. Stephanie, and she's known as Keto Mom. And we are super excited because did you know that everyone ends up somewhere, but very few end up somewhere on purpose? And that's what we're going to dive into today. I love that quote. So as you're tuning in, we do mindset mornings, go through books. We've been doing it for over a year. And so we're finishing. We only have... I think two chapters left of this book, which means we're going to need a new book before the next month. Oh, but yeah. as you're tuning in, I want I actually have a different question for you. I am curious, do you have any questions on mindset? Do you have any questions on morning routines? We talk a lot about consistency. We talk a lot about owning your day. Do you have any questions at all around any of that? I would love for you to Ask those below so that we maybe can come on tomorrow. I don't know if we'll come on tomorrow. Monday. Oh, we can. Well, no. we got a rather busy Saturday. We have a super a busy weekend. We it's Easter weekend. Yep. But you never know. Maybe we can do it. We can find time. We'll see. It probably won't be in the morning. We're helping at an event, a big event. Throughout the day. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're going to be talking about, you might you might go, wait, you talk about that all the time, but it is super important. It but all as starts I, with your mindset. As I picked up this book, remember going through this book? Uh, that book changed my life probably 15 years ago, so 16, 17 years ago. We've been talking a lot about spokes in your life, different areas that make up your whole life, right? It's not just about your health and fitness. Right. Oftentimes people are like, I just want to lose 50 pounds. I'm like, listen, it's not just about that. It's about your relationships and your finances. And so this book, I actually think this is one of the very first books we ever did as a personal development book yes you think together it's been revised so this, this is, isn't the same book that we had right 15 years ago so steve used to work for life church his name is pastor craig rochelle and we got this book for our daughter and so i told her to go through it but i picked it up this morning and i read the phrase everybody ends up somewhere few people end up somewhere on purpose and i thought oh i love that and i love the concept of this book and so i'll show you an example he puts the wheel differently i don't know if we'll go through this but he talks about the wheel of your life, right? I would love to go through that book. This could be the next book we go through. And so he just talks about the power of your relationship with God, people, finances, health, and work. So those are the spokes that he talks about. We talk about like spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, financially. It's basically the same thing. He just uses different words. It would be a really great book to go All through. All right, so it sounds like that's the next book. Do you guys, has anybody ever read this book? What do you think? Do you think we should do this book? I think I should make the decision. I think we should do this book. I think it's that's a great really I think great. That's a great decision. And I think it would be great to go back and just redo it. It was the first book we ever did together. Yeah. Years ago, 17. Went through something called LDP. It was the Life Development Plan. And I'll never forget when it was the very first time I ever wrote down goals. Ever. Or like a dream. Ever. Or a we were vision, taught like, wait, what? Or like we should my write core this values down? were, like what, what I is was this stuff? meant for. It was so good. It was. So, so good. It helped us on our marriage. It helped us in our relationship. It helped us as young. We were young. Steve is 20. I mean, we were 20. You're still young, wild, and vivacious. But the reality is we were even younger, more wilder, and even more vivacious. We were very youngly married. <laughs> but uh, for those, again, who are asking what the name of the next book is, it's oh, Cazone, C-H-A. Take a screenshot. Yes, S O. The book is called Cazone. And it's a Hebrew word. Do you know what it stands for? I thought it was vision. It's called Discovering and Pursuing God's Purpose for Your Life. It really is an incredible book. I'm having our teenagers go through it. It's going to be incredible. And here's what we do here on the page. If you get the book, awesome. I love to underline and circle and be able to go back. Like today, I was trying to find a book that I'm going to reference in just a little bit. But I love to pick up a book and just flip through it, even if I only have a couple minutes, and read something that I underlined from the past. And I'll be like, oh my goodness, yes. It's around here somewhere. Such a good reminder. Morning mirror. I really need to have the physical books but you can listen to books audibly or you can tune in here and just catch some golden nuggets golden nuggets so that's our hope is that you catch a couple golden nuggets yes if you didn't know uh Sophia, we've been married for quite a while we got four amazing daughters <clears throat> 17 14, years 14 12 10 and 8 yeah and we have four dogs so at any moment because people are waking up you could probably hear an we explosion homeschool. of dogs we work for laughter which We're is always all here fun. so we all just wanted time. to put that out there <laughs> 
But today we're going right. to talk about influences, right? Oh, nope. Actually, that's next. No. That's, oh, that's tomorrow. Well, if we, tomorrow. That's Sunday. Monday, Monday nope. Tuesday. Sometime in the Monday. near future. Just gives you something to look forward Actually, to. Actually, you've already heard this, but it's a good reminder. Remember, we talked about sometimes you need to hear things 17 times before you take massive action. It's true. Right? And sometimes you have to hear things 17 times before you make a purchase. Have you heard that? Anything. <laughs> yes. I think you just have to hear things a lot. How many times do you get hit with an advertisement and you're like, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to buy that, and then eventually, maybe you do, or maybe you don't. But. Yeah, the current number is 17 times. 17. It's a powerful number. <gasps> We've been married for 17 years. So many great things that are Such 17. a great year. All right. All right, here we go. Some of our best intentions fail because we don't have a system of execution. All right, are dun, you dun, dun. All right, so I really Take wanted to make action. sure. we. Ha I, couldn't, I can't find the book, but who of you that are watching went through the Miracle Morning with us? Uh, it's by Hal Elrod. That is an incredible book. It's like this big, teeny tiny, uh, The Miracle Morning. Because what we're going to talk about real quick is basically, if you own your morning, you own your day. If you get up and you've got routines and systems, you're going to feel better, you're going to make better choices, you're going to be a happier person. If you don't do those, then you just let your day kind of run you over. Yeah, and then you will not end up somewhere on purpose. You've got to have right. a plan. Right. And you have to execute that plan with action. To reach new goals, develop new habits, it's necessary to create new routines and systems. So. He's telling stories. I'm not going to read all the stories, but he basically talks about being intentional. Here's something that in the Miracle Morning book they've never talked about. So you have to tell me if you do this. All right. He talks about morning routines. He says, I get up every morning. I'm thankful. So I lay in bed. I say things I'm thankful for. He might send out some like gratitude uh, text messages like, hey, I'm thankful for you today. He talks about moving his body, drinking his coffee, writing in his journal. All of the things that if you read the Miracle Morning... Do you remember all the things you have to do? Savor. Not have to, you get to do. Scribe. Yes, the book basically just talks about journaling, moving your body, reading, mindset, meditation, and you can either do it for six minutes in the morning or 60. So the book is great. Well, I like the visualiz visualization aspect. Yes, yeah, so you give that. The mindset. I mean, how would you mm -hmm. say you're doing on a zero to 10 with your meditation and uh, mindset? I mean, um, your mindset's strong, but I mean like, Future pacing, my, visualizing the future. Where my are you at? biggest challenge is meditating. And that is why I brought it up because she is unbelievable at executing in the present moment. Yes. I don't feel like meditating is executing in the future. Do you think? No, it's getting a future vision. This is true. This is what we're kind of talking about. Yes. That's why that part's so important. Our children, if you saw our stories, created vision boards yesterday. They created vision boards in the beginning of January, and then they all looked at them the other day, and they said, hey, uh, we want to redo them. They're actually not our vision anymore, or maybe we've accomplished some things. So they all redid their vision boards. So good. Steve is incredible <laughs> at meditating or just being still and casting vision, and I am working on it. So basically, you're the <laughs> one who makes it happen. I'm an executor, We're a great for sure. team. We're a yeah. great team. What about you? Do you meditate? Like, do you sit in quiet? Do you like to think futuristic? Meaning, what's to come like in a year, two years, three years? Or are you stuck in the moment of like, I've got to lose this 15 pounds in two weeks, or I'm done? I mean, one thing that I read a study a while ago, and it was more for like when people are elderly. Yeah. They have a tendency to just kind of let go of life because they don't really have anything to look forward to. Right. Maybe they're at a point where they've lost a lot of friends or a lot of family, and they just are kind of existing. And I think it's a sad reality, but, I mean, how amazing is it if you can create that future that actually propels you to want to take action, that, that encourages, you, encourages you to wake up in the morning, put your feet on the ground with a smile on your face, and actually go after it. I mean, that's the kind of life that we should be wanting and desiring right. and actually creating, is a life to where you're like, yes, I woke up. It's time to make some things happen. I love that. So here's something that he talks about that I've actually, I don't remember reading this in other books. I'm sure we have, but he says you need to bookend your days. So he says, if you start your day off with whatever, however you want to start your morning off, owning your morning, get the book Miracle Morning. But if you start your day off doing your routines, he goes, you can do the same thing at the end of the day. So he has a whole routine for the end of the day of reading, and I, I, I wrote down a whole bunch of questions, but basically it says, 
but you can almost always control your beginning of your day and your end of the day. You can't help it if a meeting goes long in the middle of your day, or you can't help it if things happen because it's life. But he goes, when you wake up, you, you're in control. When you go to bed, you're in control, bookending your day. And having your routine for both. Do you have a routine before you go to bed? I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides like brushing your teeth and washing your face. I do. Oh. I, I put, I do. Like I have to put on my, my blocker glasses. Oh, okay. Actually, he's really great. I start he, shutting guys, my phone down. He's great at all things. Well, sometimes, sometimes. Except I don't the... always know if we're mutual because we are pretty different. <laughs> we're complete opposites. Yes. Um... I do have a routine for night. I know. He's such a routine. But. Oh, I'm very sporadic. Especially I mean, if you see our bedroom, I don't know what you would say about that. I don't know if that's your fault, my fault. It's both of our faults because we've allowed it. Because we've been traveling, it looks like an explosion of it's clothes like a collection. everywhere. It's like a collection. They're all clean, life. but they're all over the place. So messy. So that's my mm. hardest part is like, and like we're getting ready for he Easter. He likes Happy clean Good Friday. and routine. I look around the house and it's like we've got three extra tables, like, 14, uh, 18, like 20, some extra chairs. In our house. It's like. It's in the process of being put together for 26 people. But see, sometimes that also goes with your EQ and your AQ. You have to be adaptable. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say you have to go buy the book. I would say just go to ketomomsecrets.com. Just go there and then you can just go to the book club section because Stephanie oh, has yeah. went over that book. And she's went through every chapter. She's given you all the highlights. You, you can, can watch the watch video. It. You can read the transcript. You can get the little quote cards. It's all there. Keto Mom Secrets. Keto Mom Secrets. It's our blog. All right. I love this. So here's what he does at the end of his day. We really do talk a lot about at the beginning of your day, and I love this. He said, it's important to cash out your day's performance. You might like this. So, okay. He said, Compa compared to planning for the day, how so how did it go? What did you need to carry over to tomorrow? What else needs to be added based on what showed up throughout the day? What's no longer important and that needs to be scratched off? He, so That's he really sits good. at the end of the day and he logs his day. We actually did a live the other, a couple days ago, and we just checked in at like nine o'clock at night and we just said, how's your day? Like recapping, how did it go? What are some things you learned? What are some things you can implement new tomorrow? And so he basically does that every day. He says, just like a, a waitress has to cash out at the end of the day, like writing things down to go, this worked, here's my goals tomorrow, I don't need to worry about this, I'm gonna take that off my plate. It's kind of like a brain dump. It's really good. Brain I dump. I like that. Uh, if you haven't done that, what basically what that means is you just take a short amount of time and you just do, 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 you just jot down all of the things that you either need to do, the things that you're thinking about, and you just kind of get them out of your system. And then you kind of put them in order of importance. That's really what that means. And right. then you can execute it. Some people call it eat the frog. So it's like eat yeah. the frog, do the first biggest thing in the morning, tackle that biggest task. Because then for the rest of the day, you feel super successful right. in what you do because you've already got that big mo going that we talked about yesterday. You got that momentum going. Oh, yeah, he talks about that. And I would also say if you're brand new here and you're like, what? are they talking about? Just comment new down below or send us a message. We'd love to know more about you, where you're tuned in from, what some of your goals are, and to figure out how and what we do could maybe come in alignment with what you do. He says, once your daily disciplines have become a routine, you want to be, you want to keep those in rhythm. And as soon as you do, and you've got the disciplines and actions, you're, you're doing it regularly, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. That's where you meet Big Mo. That's the momentum. That's the rhythm. And basically he gives you a whole bunch of different things like a train, a train starting off, right? When your disciplines and actions develop a rhythm, you become, you meet Big Mo. And then you guys, he has an entire list of his morning. So see it right here. Let me see this. And he has Monday through Sunday and he checks off every day he does those things. So he has like his calls. It's impressive. I know. His 30 minute cardio, his weights, and then he keeps track. I like and then he. Date night with he, the spouse. It's he, Friday. See, it is date night. It is date night. We're going on a date tonight. Mandatory today. He loves data. Data drives decisions. Oh, I like that saying. Right? What does that mean? It just means some people guess their way through things, or I mean, I've been learning more about real estate lately, and it's really easy to make emotional decisions, or even like with vehicles, you can make emotional decisions. A lot of people eat out of emotions, but if we're right. tracking and if data drives decisions, we should just be looking at things holistically from like a numbers perspective, take the emotion out of it. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement to 
those types of things that I just For named. Sure. But when you're focused just on the data, that is what drives the decision. So it's pretty simple. Like, does this make, uh, like, okay, if I eat the whole cake, data would show that I'm way over my caloric intake for yeah. the day. It's not the best decision, so I should probably say no. Does that make sense? Right. But if I'm looking at a house and the house is like, well, I'm going to be short $2,000 every month, uh, that wouldn't be a good data decision. Data drives decision. But like this car that we're looking at. That he's looking at. It's a appreciating asset. And I know a lot of yeah. people are like, cars are not appreciating assets. But when it's rare and when it's in your backyard, it can be an appreciating asset. Data should drive decisions. Data drives decisions. I'm not, I'm not manipulating any of those <laughs> emotions. All right. A couple more thoughts. No, it's good. What are your thoughts? Do you like an Audi R8? Do you oh, think man. that would be a good idea? When Any most shift? people start a new endeavor, their goals, <laughs> they grab the lever and they start pumping. So he gives an example of one of these little, um, I like that. This water, what's it called? Water level, water, water pump, water pump, water pump, right? My kids would say like, yeah, like Laura Ingalls Wilder days. So he says when most people grab the lever and they start pumping really hard, uh, they pump and they pump and they pump and after a few minutes, that's when they, they don't get any water because it takes, have you guys ever done one of those where you're pumping the water and it takes like page number 112, my, my grandparents used to have one of these. So that's I remember we are on. doing it with my parents and it took a long time for the water just to get up through the pump. So I got to keep pumping. He says they don't realize how long it takes to create the vacuum needed to suck the water into the pipe and eventually out of the spout and into the bucket. Just like the merry-go-round we talked about yesterday, there's rocket ships that take a long time to launch or steam engines breaking free of inertia. It takes time, massive energy, and consistent sea to pump the water. Most people give up, but wise people continue to pump. We can give you all of these analogies. We can talk like about that. the merry-go-round. We can talk about a train getting started. We can talk about water pumps. Tip of the day. They're all the same. Never stop pumping. No, and once you get it going, I've heard, I, I, don't have the, I don't have the research to back this up, but I know I read it somewhere, how if you stop working out, within two weeks you already start losing muscle mass. Like your, your body already stops, like it starts, if you quit, if you quit something, you don't even quit. just Keep going. lose momentum. Like, you, it, like Mr. Mo, the momentum is dead. Uh -oh. And then your body starts going, oh, I guess you don't need these muscles. I'm gonna start using them for fuel. Good thing like, that doesn't happen Isn't it happen crazy? Either how fast you stop working out and how much it starts, it takes to get restarted. It's so true. So once you <sighs> have the rhythm going, keep the rhythm moving. Winning the race is all about the pace. That was the last thing I underlined. That was it. I would we've, say this. We've gone through all of this. It's just a good reminder. It is a great reminder. And some, sometimes I just keep thinking about the, you did a story a couple days ago and you just said, I just feel so good. Yes. And when you feel good and when you're in that happy place, things happen. Like you start creating more. I mean, you've been giving these two hands for a reason to go create some stuff. You can take some action. You've been given this mind and you've been given a heart to lead strong from. To work hard. But sometimes like if you're not fueling your body properly, you're not going to feel good. If you're not sleeping well, you're not, you're not going to feel, feel good. good. It, I mean... There's just some simple, basic foundations. If, you, if you've got stress in your life, if you've got unforgiveness in your life, like you're just not gonna feel good. Right. And so I would say today is Good Friday. Today is a day where it should be good. Like things should be good. And if you're like, ah, oh, things are not good. I would say, well, what are those things that are not good? Write those things down right now. Mm -hmm. And let's come up with a game plan to figure out how to turn those not so good things to good. And if you're like, I don't know how to, guess what? Send us a message. We'll give you some input. You don't have to take it. It would be just our thought. It would right. be just our, our feedback. It'd be just our opinion. Right. But we've learned from a lot of amazing people. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of great mentors. And Stephanie, I mean, she's a wellspring of knowledge. And so I can tell you this. She's going to give you some really great advice. I mean, some unbelievable advice. So I don't care what it is in regards to which spoke or what area of your life that you're like, oh, it's not so good. Let her help you. It can become good. And I would we also just say together. this. You, we are. We're constantly learning together. And uh, I would just say along the lines of not feeling good, get your morning in order. Get your things in order. 
and set the new pace. Be intentional. Oh, that's so good. That's the word I was looking for. Oh. Be intentional. Be intentional with everything that you do and just watch where today could end up. Right. Watch where this weekend could go. Watch where your life will go because you're taking the right steps and you're being intentional. Over the course of time. Yep. So That's we appreciate you. The book is great. It's probably things that you know you just haven't put it into action. So today's the day to put it into action. So send us a message with any questions you have. This will be the book that we go through next. Again, yes. you can go to ketomomsecrets.com and look at, it's, is the tab book club? I should probably look at my own blog. Yeah, I'm he, pretty sure. He does It's it. there. We have a great team. We have a team of people that. that do it. So I don't even go look at it. I just create the content and then they put it on the blog. And so there's a book club section there. You can watch the lives of all of the books we've done. I want to give so, a shout out to Liz, Abby, and June. There are some great friends of ours who help us with the website. They create it all. Have created a lot of great stuff with us. So. Yeah, they're super great. Yeah. And so are you. Thanks for tuning in. You are super great. And know that your life does yeah. make a difference. And I would say for the comments that I'm kind of reading, like it's harder to get back on track. Well, guess right. how it's easier to get back on track? When you have people in your life that can help you and support you, that can believe in you to get back on track. Find those people. Well, and, and I, I think oftentimes people think, oh, it's so hard. Choose yes, your heart. Yes, it Choose is. Your and heart. it starts with your mindset. And it doesn't have to be all of the things. Right? Like, well, everything is broken. I had a phone call with a girl the other day, and she was like, everything is broken. And I said, no, not everything is broken. What is the one spoke that, that is running all of these things that you feel like is broken? Right? right? So, like, this this will be great about this book because he breaks down the spokes of your life. And basically, I just said, all right, if you had to put your whole life in that little wheel, what's the one that's broken? And she said, well, this one. And I said, are you open to a suggestion? And we talked about things that could help it. So there it is. There's all of your tips for today. I just Send us we a sometimes overanalyze and try to fix them all at once. Like go to the gym and eat perfectly, and I need to go on a date, and I need to fix my relationship with my kids, and I can't go to Target because I spend too much money. Well, like maybe it just starts with your attitude. There it is. Right? Like just get up and be thankful. It's okay to tell your kids no sometimes. It's okay to spend 30 minutes at the gym for yourself moms because i never did that in the very beginning right when our girls were little so like you have to be okay with saying no to some things so some other things can be better saying no to good so you can choose better i don't know that's it all right we need to go feed our children breakfast i gotta charge my phone because it's about okay to we up. appreciate you reach out <laughs> have an incredible friday thank you for always tuning in bye